In this video, I'll show you how to quickly create a 3D topographic surface from 2D contour lines using Grasshopper. We have 2D contour lines, a yellow box that represents our site area. If we were to create the topographic surface manually, it would take a lot of time to move each curve vertically. So we'll use Grasshopper to automate this process. Let's see the final script. The script requires three inputs, elevation text values, contour lines, and site boundaries. By referencing these inputs, we can create the surface and color code it based on elevation and slope. If we chose the color-based elevation, the color of the topographic surface will become more red as we move towards the higher areas. Alternatively, if we color code based on slope, steeper slopes will appear more reddish, while gentler slopes will appear more bluish. This can be useful to choose proper site areas based on your preferences. Additionally, we'll find the minimum and maximum slope angle. Without further ado, let's create this script from scratch. We will start by importing the contour lines. Go to File, Import, and select the DLG file. You can download these files and follow along with me. The link is in the description. Now let's see the idea of how we proceed. We see that some contour lines have elevation text values assigned to them. The main contour lines have a 10 meter difference. We will connect these numbers in increasing order then we can order the middle curves based on slope. Then we can assign them a value for each curve and move them in this direction based on their values. Some curves have duplicate text values which create cross connections. We'll see how we can tackle those problems and explore more techniques for filtering out based on different logics. First, we will reference the contour and text values into Grasshopper. For the contours, we'll use a curve container. To filter out only the curves, we can do this using the cell curve command. Next, we will reference the elevation text. But here's the thing, we can't reference the text object directly. Instead, we'll use its GUID. Later, we can use JPython to read its values. What I did was ask ChatGPT to provide me with a GHPython script that can read Rhino text objects and a location using their GUID. I'm going to put this script in the description so that you can copy it and follow along with me. Once you have it, we'll place it inside a GH Python component. To add an input for the GUID, simply copy the texted variable and paste it into one of the input slots. Then we can remove this variable from the script since it's now being supplied as an input. Now we need to set up our outputs to receive the information we want from the script. To do this, We'll copy the text value variable and assign it to one of the outputs. We'll also add a second output for the text object's location, which we'll call point. Lastly, we can remove the print statement from the script since we don't need it. We can see our values by directly connecting to panel and point container. Now that we have the text value and the starting points, we can see that the points are a little bit far from the contours. To fix this, we can pull those points towards the closest contour. To do this, we can use the pull point component. The point will go into the point input and the curve will go into the geometry input. Now that we have the points aligned with their respective curves, the next step is to create a network of line connections to the main contours. Let's take this point as example we will create line connections from this point to its nearby points. Since each point has its own respective text value, we can use those to calculate the level difference. Knowing that the main contour level difference is 10 meters, we will filter out lines that have a level difference of 10 meters and remove the rest of the lines. We will use the proximity 3D component to connect each point to its nearby possibilities. You can adjust the distance range and how many lines per point to be created, but the default values work fine, so I'll leave them as they are. Now that we have links and topology, meaning line connections and the corresponding point indices, we can use those indices to select the text values we obtained earlier from the GH Python component in the same order as the line connection topology. So we will bring up the text and use the list item component to do so. If we examine the data tree, we can see that it has 15 branches. 
The text values are all placed in a single branch with 15 items. To match the data structure, I will use a graph component. Once we have a similar data structure, we can calculate the level difference between each line connection. This first value will be calculated for all corresponding items in the similar branch, and the same thing will apply to the rest of the items. Now that we have similar data structures, we can perform a subtraction operation using both sets of data. Let's take a look at our results. Some of the values are negative and some are positive. We can use these values as a pattern to mask out the lines. We'll convert all positive values with a magnitude of 10 to true and the rest to false, since we know that the level difference from the main contour line is 10. To do so, we will use the equality component and compare the values with 10. If they are equal to 10, the result will be true. Currently, we know that the main contour difference is 10, but if we use this script for a different difference, we need to manually input it. To avoid this, we can extract this value from the text value we got earlier. Since some texts are repeated, we will use the create set component to extract unique items. Then we will sort the values. Once we sort them, we can find the difference between the first and second item. We can use list item to get first and second item. Then we can find the difference by subtracting. Since we order them ascendingly, the difference will be negative 10, so we can use the absolute value component to convert it to a positive number. With this, we can replace the previous value with it. Now let's go back to our previous patterns. Using those booleans, we filter out the lines. So we will bring out the previous lines we obtained from proximity 3D and use the cold pattern component to filter out the lines. Now that we've filtered out the connections that have only a 10 level difference, we can see that some overlaps remain. If we take a closer look at the data structure, we can see that it has a different index count for each branch. 1, 0, and 2. This is because some lines have no closed point connections, while others have two possible true results. If we see the value 2390, it has two corresponding values that both have an equal 10 level difference. However, we can remove the duplicate line by using the following logic. The first line touches only six Kautra lines, while the second one touches more than six. We can use this logic to filter out the blue curve. I will graph the lines so we can test each of them separately. Next, we can find the intersections with the contour lines using the curve curve intersection component. The lines will be connected to the first input, and the contour will be connected to the second input. Each intersection point is placed in a separate branch, but we want to group them with their corresponding curve. To do this, we can trim the tree so that each intersection point is placed in a branch created by its corresponding curve. Now we can see how many intersection points are made by each line. I will filter out only those that have a count of six using the prune tree component and set the minimum and maximum to six. To visualize what we have done, we need to connect the output directly to a polyline component. Now we filter out the breaches that have only six intersection point, however. A problem is that the contour line is probably not sorted, so the point order will change. You can visualize the order using the point list component. If we see the order, some of the points are in increasing order and some of them are messed up. We need to sort those points based on intersection parameter. We previously used the trim tree. In order to have a similar data structure, we need to trim the parameters as well. Once they have similar branches, they can be used as a sorting key. Now we have sorted the data in increasing order, but the order does not follow the slope direction. So I will reverse the list. 
We now order the intersection points based on the slope direction, but there's still one more issue we need to address. It seems that many contour lines have one or more duplicate text values associated with them. For instance, the range 2340 to 2350 might be given twice for the same curve. To solve this problem, we'll need to remove these duplicates as a pair. Here's how we can approach the problem. First, we can take the first and last point from each set of intersection points. Let's call them points A and B. Then, using those points, we can find the closest contour lines. Let's say they're curves 1 and 2. Finally, we can write both curve IDs together, separated by a hyphen. If we come across any duplicate IDs, we'll remove them to ensure we're only keeping unique pairs. Let's implement those steps. First, we can use the list item component to select the first and last point in each branch of intersection points. We can do this by providing the indices of 0 and minus 1 for each branch. Next, we'll use the closest geometry component to find the closest contour line to each point. Since we're looking for contour lines, we'll connect the component to the G input. What we need from this step is the index of the contour line closest to each point. Since we've selected two points from each branch, there will be two contour indices in each branch as well. Now we can join the indices as one text value separated by a hyphen. To do this, we'll use the text join component and give a hyphen as the separator. We'll need to flatten the IDs so that they can be placed in the same branches. If we take a closer look at the IDs, we'll notice that there are some duplicates. For example, there are two 30 to 35 IDs, and one of them is a duplicate. Similarly, there are other duplicates as well. Using those duplicates, we'll determine which path has the duplicate, and then remove that branch using that path. To get the paths, we first need to find the index of each unique ID. We can do this by finding the unique IDs using the create set component and then using the member index component to get the index where they are placed. In each branch, we'll get one or two indices depending on how many duplicates we have. To select one of them, we can use the list item component. We can go back and get the previous text and extract the path using the tree statistics component. From those paths, we will select based on the index we obtained earlier. To do this, we can use the list item component. Here, we've obtained the unique paths that don't have duplicates. Using the tree branch component, we can select the branches based on these paths. To visualize what we have done, we can connect the output to the polyline component. Now we've selected only one set of intersection points based on the logic we implemented. Now that we have an organized set of intersection points, we can select the corresponding contour lines in the same order. Then we can move the points up gradually based on the difference in elevation. To achieve this, we'll use the closest geometry component again to get the index of the contour line that belongs to each point. This will allow us to select the closest contour line using the list item component and place them in the same data structure. Finally, we can move the contour lines in this direction based on their level differences. To move the contour lines, we need to give them gradually increasing Z factors. For the contour lines, we can create these factors using the range component. So first, we need to create domains based on the elevation results. To do this, we can go back to where we calculated the level differences. Instead of subtraction, we can create domains from possible connections using the construct domain component. It's worth noting that the domains are from large to small, so we'll need to swap the inputs to reverse them. We will check the data structure and match as we go. 
Here we have 15 and 18 branches, which is caused by the use of the coal pattern component. As we used the coal pattern component before, we can use the same component to cull the unnecessary domains. Now we notice that the number of branches has changed from 18 to 12. This happened because we previously used a prune tree component. To fix this, we need to match the data structure by using the filter unmatched component. This component is from the tree sloth plugin and all the necessary plugins are listed in the description. At last, we used the tree branch component, which caused the data tree to change from 12 to seven branches. So we need to perform the same operation to match the data structure. So I will copy and apply to this also. Now we can ensure that the domains are correctly ordered. To do this, we'll use the text tag 3D component. The location will be the midpoint of the polyline and, and so the text will be the domains. Now we can see that the domains are now correctly matched to their respective positions. Based on the created domains, we will now generate a range of numbers. To do this, we will use the range component and division will be the contour division count that we set early. We'll add the expression x minus one, since the range component gives one more result than the count. The range of numbers we created based on the domains is quite large, and if we were to use them directly, our topography would be elevated by thousands of meters. To avoid this, we need to shift all values down. We can use the min-max component to determine the minimum value, and then subtract it from all values. Now that we have moved the curves based on the text values, I will organize the nodes and move on to the next step. Let's move forward with creating the topographic surface. To achieve this, we first need to divide the curves into equally distributed points. The division count will be based on the length of the curve, so I will divide it by a constant number and use it as the count. Let's continue with the next step. We will flatten the points and remove any possible duplicate points by using the cold duplicate component. After that, we can create a mesh surface using those points by using the Delaunay mesh component. Additionally, we could also use the patch component to get a surface. I want to extract a portion of this surface. To do so, I will create a rectangle in Rhino and extrude it in this direction. This can be used to split the topographic mesh. We can use the mesh split component to achieve this. The splitter will be this extrusion, so I will reference it using a brow container and use it as the splitter input. This gives us two different surfaces, so I will use list item to choose one of them. To get a smoother result, we will remesh the mesh using the quad remesh component. We can adjust the target count to get a more refined mesh. In the next stage, we will assign colors to the mesh based on the slope and elevation difference. So first, we will use the deconstruct mesh component to extract mesh vertices, face color, and normal data. Then we can create the mesh again using the construct mesh component. Now we can assign vertex color for the mesh based on the slope. To do this, we will calculate the angle difference between the normal vectors and vector of Z. Using the gradient component, we can assign a color gradient based on the angle.
The lower and upper limits can be extracted using the min-max component, and the parameter will be the angle result we got earlier. We can then adjust the color gradient as desired. The angles are given in radians, but for easier understanding, we will convert them to degrees. Using the bounds component, we can see the minimum and maximum slope angles in degrees. The reddish color represents the steeper slopes, with a slope angle of 11 degrees, while the blue areas represent the gentler slopes. Next, we will give color based on elevation. To achieve this, we first need to extract the z-coordinates of each vertex using the deconstruct point component. Then we can apply the previous gradient setup by copying and pasting it, and this time use the z-coordinate as the parameter instead of the slope angle. We are going to make this look like 3 section. First, we need to extract the naked edges of the mesh using the Mesh Edge component. Then we will use the Join Curves component to join those edges and project them onto the XY plane. After that, we can merge the projected curves and the create a lofted surface using the Loft component. Once we have the lofted surface, we can assign different materials to different parts of it using the Custom Preview component. If you're interested in the final Grasshopper script and all other project files, you can obtain them by becoming a Patreon supporter. Your support will allow me to create more high-quality tutorials. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.